very very quickly Matthew chapter 24 I will start from verse 11 Matthew chapter 24 verse 11 he said and many false prophets shall rise and deceive many and because iniquity shall abound the love of many shall wax cold but he that end shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. If you read from verse 1. All right. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. If you now read from verse 1. He said, and Jesus went out. And departed from the temple and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And as he sat upon the mount of olives, the disciples came unto him privately saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thine coming and the end of the world? This evening, I speak quickly on the subject, surviving in the last days. Surviving in the last days. Our objective is first of all to understand the signs of the last days and then to understand survival strategies in the last days. Second Timothy chapter one, chapter three, verse one. He said, know this. This know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affections, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent fears, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof from such turn away. The Lord bless his word. This will be one of the most important messages that you will ever hear. Surviving in the last days. The scripture made it abundantly clear that we are in the last days. God never told us categorically when the end will come. But he gave us signs and signals. In scripture, he said in Matthew chapter 24, verse 36 to verse 43, he said, but of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Then shall two be in the field, the one shall be taken and the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill, the one shall be taken and the other left. Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. But notice that if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have allowed his house to be broken up. Therefore be ye also ready, 
For in such an hour as he think not, the Son of Man cometh. The Lord bless his word in Jesus' name. There is no categorical statement of where, when it will come. But throughout scriptures, there are signs and signals that will identify the end of the age. Signs that will show. You don't know the exact date, but you know that you can know that you are around the corner. God did not totally leave us in the dark. Very quickly, we are going to look at those signs and signals of the last days. Number one is the abundance of deception and falsehood. The abundance of deception and falsehood. In Matthew chapter 24 verse 5, where he gave all this, most of these signs. He said, many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. They shall say, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. In Matthew 24 verse 11, the same Matthew, and many false prophets shall rise, and shall deceive many. So one of the things that will identify for us that we are around the end is that there shall be an explosion of deception, an explosion of falsehood. A lot of false prophets, false apostles, false teachers, false doctrines, a lot of heretic practices and operations that at times you are watching and you say, Where, how did this originate? What's happening here? When we came into the Lord many, many years ago, first in the late 70s and then in the mid 80s, around 86, when we came, there was, anything, there was very few mention of the word false prophet, very few. I can't even remember anybody identified as false prophet in those days. People were passionate for God, on fire, zealous for God. But today, there are people who have no dealings with Jesus Christ. They don't know what it means to be born again. They have never been born again. People who otherwise should have been native doctors or witch doctors. Who are wearing suit and tie. And are pastors and preachers and apostles and prophets and everything. The challenge right now is that there are fakes and false ones that are celebrated as real. And there are real ones that are suspected to be fake. As a matter of fact, you will soon know also that we live in a world where the agenda of the Antichrist is so rife. When they classify pastors you see people classified together showing that the difference and the discernment between the real and the and the unreal is, is, is gone those who are experts in castigating churches when they do that they do it together it's a mixture came across somebody who said that she went to a place where I think she paid almost a million naira or something for deliverance or for healing or for help. And at the end of the day, no solution. So that is one sign. We are hearing now of false prophets, false apostles, false teachers and false everything that we have ever known, that, that we have ever known in history. It's an explosion. It's an escalation in Africa, across Africa, across Nigeria, and the nations of the world. Number two is the abundance of conflicts and crises in the earth. Just abundance of conflicts, crises, and wars in the earth. It was predicted in scriptures. If you read further from the verse 5 where we read of Matthew chapter 24. Many shall come in my name saying I am Christ and shall deceive many. And then and you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. 
See that you be not troubled for all these things must come, but the very end hasn't come. That is, you are around the end, but it's not the end yet. Abundance of conflicts, crisis, tension everywhere. Places where you have ethnic crisis, where you have religious crisis. We heard of Iran-Iraq war that lasted for years. Gulf war. Israel under threat from Iran and so on and so forth. When you are hearing of wars, rumors of wars, who is this going to start a third world war? Is this going to happen? You are, you are around the corner. The abundance of conflicts, crises, and wars. Number four, or number three, is the abundance of the Antichrist Or rather, the abundance of antichrist and anti-God sentiment. There is the abundance of the of 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 of, of antichrist, anti-Christian, anti-God sentiment in the earth. Then you know we are around the end. In First John chapter two verse eighteen, First John chapter two verse eighteen, he said, "Little children, it is." The last time. He said, and you know. And as you have heard that Antichrist shall come. Even now, there are many Antichrists. Whereby we know that it is the last time. We are not talking of the main antichrist yet. You see, there are little, 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 little agents of the devil, many of them, representing the agenda of the devil. There are plenty of them. What are we talking about? We are talking about an era where there is a hatred for God like never before. A hatred for church and church people like never before a hatred for christianity like never before we are in that era now where people consider you a fool to go to church they consider you have been brainwashed to go to church it's not a surprising thing it is the agenda of the end where somebody will open a whole facebook page a whole social media page, YouTube, whatever. And his topic, he doesn't have a solution to offer nobody. But to say what is wrong with church, what is wrong with a pastor, what is wrong with this, what is wrong with that. No answer. I told somebody some time ago, I said, what you are posting, who do you expect to change? I said, supposing because of what you posted on social media, on YouTube or Facebook, Somebody decided I'm not going to church again. It means church is not correct. And the person ends in hell. How do you rescue such a soul? And how do you end in heaven? By sending somebody to, out of church to hell. That's it. The time we are in. So don't be shocked. When people pour venom on Christ. Pour venom on God. Pour venom on church. The poor venom. A church building is a challenge. But a cinema building is not a challenge. A brewery is not a challenge. A nightclub is no problem. If they say the largest nightclub in the world can now take like 200,000 people in one nightclub party. No child, nobody will say nothing. But a church building is a problem. Because we are in the end of the age where everything about the church irritates the devil and his people. Because he knows the end is here. The abundance. No wonder he said that you shall be hated of all nations for my sake. And the greatest challenge is that there are a lot of ignorant people, ordinary good church people recruited 
like those who followed Absalom without knowing where they are going, recruited into this anti-God, anti-church, anti-Christian agenda. Talk anything and talk anyhow against God, against church, against people, against pastor, anyhow. Because it seems to be the fad of the hour. It is the, it is the in thing. Brothers and sisters, don't be shocked. That is the agenda of the season. But in the midst of that, the church triumphs. Because it's coming for a glorious church. That was number three. The abundance of antichrist, anti-Christian, and, and anti-God sentiment around the earth. Number four is the abundance of plagues and famines. The abundance of plagues. What we are seeing today is in fulfillment of what is predicted to take place in the end of the world. He said that in verse 7 of Matthew 24, for nations shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes and in diverse places. Now, so we are, we are dealing with, they are, we are dealing with the abundance of plagues and famines in the earth. It is a sign and a symptom of the end time. We are, we are dealing with a lot of viruses now. There is what they call the SARS, S-A-R-S. Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome. It came out of China again in the year of 2002. It ravaged, it ran quickly, it was arrested suddenly. Then there is one they call the MERS, M-E-R-S. Middle East Respiratory Syndrome came in the year 2012. And then all the way to 2020, it did its own ravaging. All of them, coincidentally, are coronaviruses. SARS is coronavirus. SARS coronavirus caused SARS. Mass coronavirus caused mass infection. That's why they call this one the new coronavirus. Because its behavior changed. As it was, like they say, some people thought it was tweaked in the laboratory to have maybe 90% mortality and high infectivity rate causing the COVID-19 pandemic that is on the world now. Then you have the Ebola virus. Ebola virus disease hit from Central Africa to Western Africa and so forth and then literally across the world from 2014 to 2016. It appeared first in 1976. And then it ravaged. It says there will be plagues. There will be pestilences. And then, of course, the coronavirus. But there is one that has been there that people are, uh, are not aware of. Or they are aware of, but they don't think is that dangerous. And that is HIV. The early 80s, mid 80s. Ravaged the earth and it's still there. As at the end of 2018, in one year, one million deaths recorded from HIV AIDS. As at the end of 2018. So far since it started, HIV has killed over 32 million people that were recorded. 32 million. That is apart from those who die and nobody knew it was HIV. It didn't go to hospital. So it is, it is, it's, and these things, I mean, we grew up and such plagues occasionally you hear of meningitis here you hear of this and that here but these things are happening on a global dimension these are signs and symptoms that we are close to the end of the age the abundance of plagues the abundance of famines number five is the abundance of natural disasters we read the same passage you read just now. Natural, it, there will be pestilences 
earthquakes in diverse places. Earthquakes, hurricanes, volcanoes, landslides, tornadoes, cyclones, flooding, flooding. And then you heard of um, wildfires, either in California or in Australia or somewhere. And these things just keep coming and keep going and keep coming. The devil knows that his time is short. In recent time, we have experienced many of these types of these things. But I'm sure two will stand out in your heart. The Hurricane Katrina that ravaged America, especially New Orleans, in the year of 2005. 125 billion dollars worth of property destroyed. A thousand and two hundred deaths. But that was shadow compared with the tsunami of the Pacific Ocean around Japan. A little crack under the earth in the sea that lasted for only six minutes. It lasted for only six minutes. 15,899 deaths. From the displacement of the water that gushed on the whole of that territory. 6,157 people injured. 2,529 people. 2,529 people missing. $360 billion worth of resources destroyed. Six minutes of slide in the water. That is the world we and, 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 and before now, it was, these things we are talking about were not as rampant as it is. But the devil knows his time is short, so he is doing a lot of overtime. We are in that season of the abundance of natural desire. And once you see that, you know, we are around the end. That was point number five. Number six is the abundance of iniquity. The abundance of iniquity. In the book of Matthew 24, we are reading, and in verse 12, he said, because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. So we live in the days of the abundance of iniquity. Today, what little children of 12 years know and little children of 10 years know today, adults of 25 years in those days didn't know. Today, the whole world is almost worse than how Sodom and Gomorrah was before God destroyed it. It was almost as, it was, it's, it's literally worse than how it was in the days of Noah before God destroyed it. 27 countries, not 2,700, not, 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 not two countries, 0.7, 27 countries, there are 27 countries in the world where it is legal, legalized for man to marry man and woman to marry woman. That was the iniquity of Sodom and Gomorrah. Countries all the way from the Netherlands since the year of 2001, almost 19 years ago, they, are, they started legalizing. 2003 in Belgium, 2005 in the Canadian Parliament, 2005 all the ways, even South Africa and Africa here, and so on and so on. You keep on going on and going on, even in the Pacific areas, 27 countries. There are some of these countries where a man and a, ma a man walks to meet you, and they say, we want to marry, and, say, and you say, I, I won't marry you, you go to jail. There was a case, I think, in America where a, a, a woman who I think was selling flour or something and, 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 and two men came and said they, they want to buy something for their wedding. He said, two of you are wedding? Yes. Okay, I'm not selling. And they took her to court. 
The case went all the way to Supreme Court. In America, she won the case. That's the world we are in now. The abundance of iniquity. There are places where prostitution is recognized as an official work. They call it commercial sex work. They are licensed, recognized by police, protected. They pay tax. In that country, somebody can walk to a prostitution shop and see naked women standing inside glass casing. The way you see shoe and suit inside glass, naked, complete, and standing is like that, and then you point the one you want. It's like commodity you came to buy. That's the world we are, the literal world we are in now. We're passing, we're driving in New York some time ago, my wife and I, and saw two men on this on the road by at the junction kissing each other in the day, broad daylight. Two men. The sight want to make you vomit. Today, children are forced to be taught in some Western countries. They call it alternative lifestyle. You teach them from childhood whether they want to be regularly married or they want to be homosexuals, whether they want to be bisexuals, whether, whatever they want. You teach them. They say they have the right to know so they can choose what they want. The abundance. Just before this, Coronavirus explosion, one of those countries that have one of the worst disasters, they had, I think it was a gay conference, men, homosexual, the stadium was filled with naked people. Men. When they took the Ten Commandments from American classrooms, because that nation was founded, on God. When it was removed from the, from the classrooms, it was, there was an explosion in murders, in killings. Teenage pregnancy went up by 70%. And, and birth. So you have children that were born out of wedlock. Plenty. Experienced no fatherly love, no homely love. So they are hardened criminals. They don't know what it means to love. Three million sexually transmitted diseases among teenagers yearly, yearly. When we, we grew up, there are things that you frowned upon that is now normal because we are in the end of the age. It is the abundance of iniquity. It's important for us to know. He said, teach us to number our days so we can apply our hearts to wisdom. Number seven is the abundance of wickedness. He said the love of many shall wax cold. The love of many shall wax cold. That is love will die in the heart of people. Love for God, love for man. Abundance of wickedness. That is an explosion of selfishness. To your tent, O Israel. Everybody on their own. Where people are more concerned about themselves than about and into themselves than anybody else. I came across a story of a woman that was gradually stabbed to death. While about 30 something neighbors were watching. Nobody asked what did she do? Who is that? Heartlessness, wickedness. So you have people whose assignment today is they are called ritualists. They trade in human body parts. They are called terrorists. They are called armed robbers. Others are kidnappers. They carry people and, and, and ask for money. And there are those they kill if they can't pay money. It's a very, very wicked generation that is pathognomonic of the end time. A whole exam can be failed by a young lady who did not fulfill the wishes of the lecturer. Not that she failed the exam. A young man was complaining to me bitterly the other day. 
He said, I preached on forgiveness. And he was able to forgive his lecturer, a woman. That he was meant to graduate with second class upper. But the woman's carelessness and wickedness gave him second class lower. This is almost 10 years he graduated. He has not been able to forgive the woman. Until last Sunday we, we thought on forgiveness. A, ho, a, a person can lose promotion. He, he is now junior to his seniors because of some boss's wickedness. That's the wicked world. Where people don't consider each other. Is the abundance of wickedness. That is the world. Sign of the end of the age. You can go on, face on what do you call it now, YouTube today, and see videos you will not like to watch. They will kill a person and put it on, 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 on the internet. The process of killing. I didn't know what they call kidnapping when we were growing up, not to talk of ritual killing. The word terrorism was not in Nigeria, let's say 15 years ago. But we're in the end. So let us understand. And we are not saying this thing so that anybody should be afraid. Because there is a cover for the people of God. There is a cover. In Malachi chapter 4, verse 1. It said, For behold, the day cometh that shall burn like an oven, where the earth will be like it is inside an oven. And all the proud here, and all that do wickedly, shall be stubble. And the day that come shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, that he shall not leave them neither root nor branch. The days we are in will be very terrible for those who don't know God. Go ahead, I've, I've not finished. But unto you that fear my name, the son of righteousness will arise with healing in his wings. While others are being roasted, you shall go forth and you shall grow up as calves of the stall. And you shall tread down the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet in the day that I shall do this, saith the Lord of hosts. This is number seven. The abundance of wickedness. Number eight is the restoration of Israel. The restoration of Israel. As, as the master was talking, he said in, in verse 32 of Matthew 12, he said, when you see the fig tree, I give you the parable of the fig tree. Matthew 24, 32. Matthew 24, 32. Now learn a parable of the fig tree. When its branch is yet tender and it begins to put forth leaves, you know, that summer is near. Bible theologians and everyone alike, judging from Bible history, identifies this fig tree as Israel. When you see the nation of Israel become a nation, come together, then you realize that the end is nearby. He said in Isaiah chapter 66 verse 8, Isaiah chapter 66 verse 8, he said, who has heard such a thing? Who has seen such things? Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day? Or shall a nation be born at once? For as soon as Zion travailed, he brought forth her children. Israel as a nation was literally born in one day. After almost 2,000 years of being scattered, Around the earth, that nation came together on the 14th of May, 1948, and became a nation. Under very intense hostility of neighboring nations, they became a nation. And the miracle of Israel did not stop there. During the course of their dispersion, some Russian Jews, Ukraine, Germany, they were all over the world. The, the Hebrew language disappeared. Everywhere they went, it was the language of those places they spoke. 
But God gave a prophecy. He said, I'll return to them their language. In Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 9. I will, I will, for then will I turn to the people. I'll return it to them, a pure language. That they may all call upon the name of the Lord to serve him with one consent. Not only did the people return, their language returned. Pure. Pure ancient original Hebrew. Returned with. It was, it's one of the greatest miracles of their return. It's not possible for a language to disappear for five years and you find it. There are languages on the earth that has disappeared, gone. I don't know if the Latin, I don't know of the Greek. But this one disappeared for over 2,000 years and returned. What a mighty God. What a mighty God. But that is not all. He said, as the state is formed and is born, I will bring them from where I scattered them around the earth. <laughs> In Jeremiah chapter 31 and in verse 8, he said, Behold, I will bring them from the north country. That's the Russian area, the, those areas. And gather them from the coast of the earth. With them, the blind and the lame, the woman with child. And her that traveled, fully loaded with child together. A great company shall return. I will not only establish their land, I will return them back from where I scattered them. I was speaking with the president of the International Christian Embassy Jerusalem, Dr. Yuha Bola, yesterday. And he sent me the picture of fully loaded pregnant woman with her husband and two children returning back to their nation of Israel from Europe, pregnant with twins. He said to me, that fulfills scripture. The woman with child. He said hundreds of them are returning back this year, even in the midst of the coronavirus. They are expecting about 70 Ethiopian Jews this year to return. Those were the people that the Queen of Sheba left with. She left with a company of Jews when she visited Solomon, according to history. And they served and multiplied in that place. They've been returning for long. He said they are of the tribe of Dan. Somewhere in northeastern India, they identified some members of the lost tribe of Manasseh who are on their way. He says one of the things that will mark that you are around the corner is when you see these things happening. The restoration of the nation of Israel. The restoration of their language back to them. And the restoration. The return. Number nine is the explosion of the gospel. He said this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the earth. Then the end shall come. Matthew chapter 24 verse 14. This gospel shall be preached. Every nook and every corner of the earth shall be reached. This, this one and the next one I'm about to mention are some of the two that is being awaited. That is, nations of the earth where the gospel hasn't gone. People groups that have not been reached yet. The gospel will reach there. An explosion. However it will happen. Whether it will happen by the way it happened during the days of Philip. Where people were transported in the Holy Ghost and appeared in some places, it will happen. The gospel will reach to every nation because before the throne on the last day, you say people of every tribe, of every nation, of every tongue, every language will have at least a representation before the throne at the end. And this gospel must reach there. It's the explosion of the gospel. And number 10 is the explosion of the Holy Spirit. A Holy Ghost explosion. A move of the Spirit like never before. 
The stage is set for that move. In Joel chapter 2, Joel chapter 2 and in verse 23, Joel chapter 2 verse 23, he said, Be glad then, you children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain in the first month. And the floors shall be full of wheat, and the fats shall overflow with wine and oil. And I will restore to you the years that the locust has eaten, the canker worm, and the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, my great army, which I sent among you. And ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord your God that has done, dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. I'm still reading. I'm reading to, to, all the way to verse 28. And you shall know that I am the Lord, that I'm in the midst of Israel, and that I'm the Lord your God, and none else, and my people shall never be ashamed. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out of my, my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. I can stop there. Holy Ghost, primitive, apostolic revival the power of the spirit in schools the power of the spirit in marketplaces the power of the spirit in industries the power of the spirit in workplaces god like never before visiting the earth that is what stage is set for beloved brothers and sisters what do you do in the last days not to be a victim of the spirit of the age. Number one. Maintain. A very strong. Personal altar. Of relationship. With God. A very strong. Personal altar. Hosea chapter 6. Verse 3. Then shall we know. If we follow on to know the Lord. His going forth is prepared as the morning. And it shall come unto us as the rain, as the latter and former rain unto the earth. A very strong personal altar. If you want the rain of this revival to, to land on you. Yes, it is important to be pastored and I'm, I'm going to talk about that. And it's important to have brothers and sisters and father and mother and children and so on. But this is not a time to depend on the spirituality of another person. This is the time to have a spirituality that is vibrant and buoyant and effective. Where you can be watered where necessary. Maintain a very strong personal altar. Please complete it. Altar of relationship with God. A very strong personal altar. Your prayer life in shape. Study in shape. Fasting in shape. Number two. Refuse to be swayed by the winds of false, falsehood and de deception. Refuse to be swayed, swayed. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 13 and 14. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 13 and 14, it said, all right, I'll read the other verse later. But it says, till we come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children tossed or tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine, by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. Refuse. To be swayed by winds of falsehood and deception. You see, there are people who are addicted to error. They are permanently missing road. There are those who are addicted to new, new things. Oh, there is a new doctrine now. Oh, there is a new theology now. There is a new revelation. Truth is, there is nothing new under the sun. Oh, the new one they said now is that um, you, you can live anyhow, but you will still make heaven. Oh, the new one, somebody saw a vision or saw a revelation and saw Jesus and Jesus said so and so and so to him. Then that becomes the basis of your belief and not scripture. Satan can appear as Jesus. He can. 
There are those who are permanently looking for what is not missing. Bible says they have itching ears. Ears that are permanently looking for what to hear. Refuse. Refuse. Not everything spectacular is supernatural. Or at least supernatural from God. Because we are in that, in that, in that season. Season of falsehood. Season of deception. When somebody is giving you a counsel. You should know if it is falsehood or not. Somebody, ha somebody went to meet a, a, a quote and unquote spiritual guide. To guide him in an issue. He's married. But his wife was somewhere else. And the person guiding him is now advertising another woman to him for marriage. The woman happened to be the spiritual guide's relation. And he said, ah, ah, but it, it, it's not possible, sir. Can I do that? He said, oh, why not? You, you can actually keep this one in this place and keep the other one in another place. That man ran for, for his life. He, has to, he had to run from that place for his life. His wife said, why are you running from the church? The man told me, he said, if I tell this woman the counsel that this man gave me against her, she won't advise me to remain there. Just ensure. That's why the first point is very important. Where you have a strong personal altar of relationship with God, when you are hearing falsehood, you will know. There is a reaction inside you. When you are hearing error, something will be, will, there will be a check in your spirit. When you are hearing something, and, and the difference between error and truth is very slim. When truth is stretched a little, it becomes error. It is truth just that was a little bit stretched. Alright? It's just stretched a little bit. Then it is error. Hallelujah. The, 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 the supernatural supply, for example, is a reality. That if you walk in the covenant with God as a giver, supernatural supply is a reality. But the error of it can turn it to a game. Pay this amount and you get this amount tomorrow. That becomes gambling. It is a truth that has been stretched until it became an error. So you maintain very strong altar of relationship, refuse to be swayed by the wind of falsehood and deception. Number three, remain under strong pastoral coverage. Remain under strong pastoral coverage. Nobody is too big to be pastored. And in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11 to 14, Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11 to 14, he gave some pastors, apostles, and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. For what purpose? For the perfecting of the saints. For the work of the ministry. For the edifying of the body of Christ. Till we come to the unity of the faith. Your pastor has the assignment of perfecting you. Establishing you. In the faith, causing you to make it to heaven at the end. Hear me. It doesn't matter how anointed a person or a pastor is. If he says, one th if he says things that are contrary. To scriptures. And says that consistently. You have to watch that connection and trust God for a redirection if necessary. Don't love anybody enough to follow them to hell. Don't love anybody enough to follow them to hell. One of my people showed me a, a preaching that somebody did and there were statements made that were, were not straight. So he said, what should he do? I said, I'm not sure that this thing is correct. He said, but maybe you can listen to another message that the person preached. 
And the next message, something else. I said, okay, this is not a mistake anymore. This is not a mistake anymore. Hallelujah. But strong pastoral coverage. I will give them pastors according to my heart that will feed them with knowledge and understanding. Don't give yourself the pastor. Let God give you. That is point number three. Number four, maintain spiritual sensitivity. Maintain spiritual sensitivity. Psalm 32, see, we are in the end, we are in the last days. Like we are saying, <laughs> the difference between the authentic and the synthetic is very, is, is almost not there now. The difference between the authentic and the plastic is almost not there now. Many years ago, I returned back from the university. And I saw somebody prophesying and everybody had given heed to that prophetess and said that she was a great woman, including somebody who is an authentic prophet. Who, and I looked at the man, the man, authentic, accurate, sharp prophet. And I said, to, excuse me, sir, are you hearing this woman? Are you hearing her? This is not the spirit of God. He said, eh. I said, yes. It's not the spirit of God. This woman is not the spirit of God. That tongue she's speaking is not of God. All right, let's pray. And we prayed. And it was confirmed. And that devil was cast out of that woman. And never prophesied again. For the rest of her life. It was a spirit of divination was prophesying things like, oh no, let me not go into that. So, sensitivity, Psalm 32, verse 8 and 9. He said, I will instruct you and teach you in the way which you should go. I will guide you with my eye. Verse 8. Be not like the horse or as the mule that has no understanding. Don't be a donkey whose mouth they must hold with bits and bridle. So that they can pull it here and there. Because if you say come, it can't come. Go, it can't go. Don't be a, don't, don't move through this world like a jackal or a jackie or a whatever. Sensitivity. Because you will meet some quote unquote. Whatever. And, you, and they are not. Be sensitive. Know when to turn off that TV. Know when to turn off that conversation. Be sensitive to know when to say bye-bye to that unprofitable relationship. A capital requirement in these last days for survival is sensitivity. Be sensitive to know who will lay hands on your head and who cannot. Be sensitive to know when to go on a fast and when not. The capital requirement for survival in this last this is sensitivity. That was maintain spiritual sensitivity. Number five, live ready. Live ready. You don't know when the son of man comes. Live ready. Live ready. Live in the consciousness of his eternity. Live in the consciousness of it can come anytime. So this is not the time to harbor on confessing. In Luke chapter 21, verse 36, Luke 21, 36, he said, Watch therefore and pray always that you may you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass. And to stand before the Son of Man. Watch, therefore, pray always. That is, live ready. Live ready. You can escape all the, the plagues and the pestilence and the quakes. They are not for you. Yes, they are not for us. They are not for you. Darkness shall cover the earth. Gross darkness, the people. But the Lord shall arise upon you. And his glory shall be seen upon you. Isaiah chapter 6, verse 1 to 3. The plagues, calamities are not for you. He said, but live ready so you can escape these things. It's 
Number five, be ready. And then number six, be immersed in kingdom assignment. Kingdom assignment. Kingdom assignment. This is not a time to say when I get married, I will, I will work for God. Or after I give birth to my children, I will work for God. Or when I get a job. No. At any level you are, you can. I was working for God as a student. I was preaching in the campus. I preached until people thought I was a full-time pastor. The first day I preached in the medical students fellowship, I was in 200 level. And I preached in the medical students fellowship. They asked each other, where did this guest minister come from? Because even though I was among them, they never knew. Where did this, which ministry did this guest minister come from? That was the intensity of the preaching at that time. A, a consultant pediatrician in America who was a student in another university at that time was reminding me of a message I preached as a student to them many, many years ago. Don't let, don't say until I become, I become, I was 200 level. I didn't say until I become a senior student of 500 level or 600 or until I become a, a doctor. Or, no. Be involved in kingdom assignment now. Matthew 5, 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added. Seek first. Put God first. Even in this COVID situation, you can touch somebody's life. You can change the story. Beloved, without any doubt, we are in the last days. While we are pursuing the things we are pursuing with our lives, we are conscious that we are in the last days. While we are pursuing the things we are pursuing with our lives, we are conscious that God is first. And I believe he will help us in the precious name of Jesus. Lift up your hands. Time is gone. And let's appreciate him tonight. Let's worship him for his word to us today. Father, we give you the praise. Father, we give you the honor. Father, we give you the adoration. Father, we give you the adoration. Father, we give you the adoration. Father, we give you the worship. Elion, thank you for tonight. Thank you for tonight. Thank you for tonight. Blessed be your name. Honor to your name. Worship to your name. Thank you, Master. In Jesus' precious name. Because the time is gone, I will leave you to study the points that we have made so far. But we will pray 